Hi, welcome to the week 11 video for Axi 231. This week we looked at a topic in chapter 8, spot and forward rates, and we started off with spot rates. Now these are the simplest rates, R sub T, and it represents the annual rate that you would get if you were willing to invest your money for T years. So it's a rate agreed upon at time zero that applies for the entire T year period, and we get RT each year. So it's an annual rate, but it applies only if you're willing to put away your money for T years. And those rates are very, very closely related to the zero coupon bond prices. So we've defined B of T to be the price per $1 of face value. So obviously no one would buy a bond that only paid out $1, but B of T is the price per dollar of face value. So if we get $1 at time T, then the price at time zero would be the present value of that dollar. And if it's a T year bond, then the rate we would want to use is the spot rate RT. So therefore the price of a $1 bond maturing at time T is just 1 over 1 plus RT to the T. Remember RT is the annual rate and we have that invested for T years. The other kinds of rate we looked at was the forward rates. And these are rates that apply at a time in the future. So there's still rates that are agreed upon at time zero, or more realistically, they're implied by the rates that exist at time zero, but they apply in the future. So it's still an annual rate, but it applies from time t to time t plus r. So it's an r year rate, but it starts t years in the future. So we can uh, define the forward rate as f sub t t plus r, so specifying both the starting and the ending time of the region where that rate applies. And we can calculate the forward rates if we make the assumption that the law of one price holds. If we're assuming that the rates are all consistent with each other, then we must have 1 plus f sub t t plus r to the r, which would be the accumulation over the period from time t to time t plus r. It's got to equal the ratio of the spot rate for t plus r years over the spot rate for t years. So the justification for that would be returning to this diagram here. If we invested one dollar at time zero, let it grow to time t, and then reinvest it at the forward rate for r more years, under the law of one price, that would have to have the same accumulated value as simply investing one dollar at time zero at the spot rate for t plus r years. So both of those values will have to have the same accumulated value so we can derive that relationship. And then, simplifying a little bit further by using the relationship between the spot rates and the zero coupon bond prices, we get this even simpler relationship. So 1 plus the forward rate from time t to time t plus r raised to the power of r is simply the ratio of the zero coupon bond prices, b of t over b of t plus r. So this is kind of neat. All of these rates and bond prices are really closely related to each other. If we know one set of rates, we can determine all the other rates and prices that are consistent under the law of one price. And we looked at an example where if the law of one price doesn't hold, we can actually take advantage of that by buying the thing that's cheaper and selling the thing that's more expensive and making some guaranteed profit now without having any obligations in the future. So uh, that's basically everything for this week. Next week we'll look at chapter 9, duration, convexity, and immunization. See you then.